How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Pots Movie Dungeon. Today, I'm really excited to be going over this brand new release I just got from Era Video, True Romance. Directed by Tony Scott, written by Quentin Tarantino, and Tony Avare. This is probably one of my top 25 movies. I'm very excited to dig into this and give you more information about this movie than you probably ever wanted to know. So stay tuned. We're going to take a quick look at the trailer for those that are unfamiliar with this movie, and then we're going to get started. If this is your first time here, please like this video. Please consider subscribing. We're a new channel. We're trying to get up on our feet and get going. We would really appreciate your support and hope you enjoy. Tell me about yourself. What do you want to know? What do you do? I don't remember. Where are you from? I don't know. Just the uh, big question is, do you have a, do you have a fella? Yeah. Hello? Hello, baby. baby. Clarence? I'm a married man, buddy. <laughs> She's the sweetest thing you ever saw in your whole life. She seems very nice. I'm in big fucking trouble. My name is Vincent Cocotti. I work as consul for Mr. Blue Lou Boyle, the man your son stole from. Clarence and her girlfriend of his snatched my narcotics. I tailed it out of there. You got a hell of a lot of cocaine here, man. You don't know him. You don't know me. Not when it comes to shit like this. Oh, you got it. All worked out, don't you? Where's our coke? Where's Clarence? I'm gonna show you what I mean with a little demonstration. Man, I like this Clarence kid. This fucking guy's crazy. I think what you did... was so... I just I want you to know that you can count on me to protect you. everybody let's get started this is one of my favorite movies um i really love quentin tarantino if i had to really sit down and think about it he's probably my favorite director this was written by tarantino but if you didn't know any better you would think this was one of his main quentin tarantino movies it's got it's got his signature all over it. Um, another cool thing that I really love about this is there's so many little details in this movie that I didn't even know up until now, and I've seen this movie numerous times. But there's so many details about this movie that I found out about doing my research for this video. Just little things, like for example, in the movie, he wears the big gaudy sunglasses through most of the movie, as you can actually see on the cover there. I'm sorry, my light here. I'm having a little problems with my light tonight. If you watch Kill Bill Volume 1, when, and I, I'll put a video up here to show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, so if you, if you look at his sunglasses in this movie and you look at Kill Bill Volume 1, whenever Uma Thurman comes out of her, comes out of her coma, and I'm, I'm probably going to get his name wrong, um, Rocco, I think his name is, he's the asshole um, nurse, whatever, that, that's taking advantage of her while she's in her coma. Well, she ends up taking his glasses after she beats the piss out of him. Well, those glasses are the same exact pair of glasses he wears in this movie. It's just cool shit like that that I, I really like. Anyway, this movie was directed by Tony Scott. It was written by Quentin Tarantino and Roger... I'm probably going to say this wrong. It's Avery or Roger Avari. You guys can let me know down below. But he was uncredited. The way this worked... And I'm, I, I, have, I wrote a script and I got notes here, but I'm just going to tell you the way I kind of learned. I feel like you guys would appreciate that a little more. Basically, um, Roger Avari and Quentin Tarantino worked at a video store together in the 80s. Video Archives, I believe it was called. And Roger Avari basically wrote an 80-page script, but he couldn't quite finish it. He couldn't, didn't really know where to go with it. So he goes to his buddy, Quentin Tarantino, and he gives him the script and says, hey, do you want to take a crack at this? 
Well, Quentin Tarantino, being the master that he is, he goes away for a couple of weeks. He comes back with a 500-page script. And according to the interview that I bought, that, that I read for from Roger Avari, he says, if you know anything about Quentin Tarantino, the way he writes, it was just a big garbled mess. Thoughts, this. He actually referred to this as a pop cultural Bible Is whenever, whenever he read the script. He told Quentin just how great it was, but he said it was a mess. For the next year and a half, the two of them sat together and rewrote the script, and they came up with the final product, and it was called The Open Road, if, if memory serves. Um, so basically, this movie was never going to be made into one, one film. Quentin Tarantino knew that. Um, I think Roger Avari knew that as well. So what's interesting is this movie became, part of this movie became True Romance. Things in the script got redone and got repurposed for Pulp Fiction. Certain things also got repurposed for Natural Born Killers, which you know Quentin Tarantino was a writer on that as well. So uh, uh, there's certain certain scenes from Pulp Fiction, that, I, like just for example, when Jules and Vincent get shot at and they miraculously, all the bullets missed them, that scene was supposed to happen to Gary Oldman's character in the movie. Um, Drexel Spivey. And the scene where, oh shit, I, saw, I shot Marvin in the face. That scene. That was supposed to be Drexel, Drexel Spivey, whatever. That was, scene was supposed to be in True Romance. Those scenes got cut and got repurposed and got put into Pulp Fiction, which I'm glad they did. They're classic scenes. One other piece of information I found interesting was after, the, uh, after True Romance finished filming, Tarantino sold the script, the actual physical script, to a collector, fan, whatever, for $10,000. And he used that money to buy the red Chevy Chevelle that John Travolta drives in Pulp Fiction. So the next time you're watching Pulp Fiction, you now have some more information. I thought that was kind of neat. So anyway, there's there's a lot more information that I want to go over before this video is over. And um, please forgive my excitement. I know I talk fast. I know I get out of breath. I know I stutter. But... You know, this movie deserved my true reaction. This is, is, like I said, one of my favorite movies. So I'm going to try to you know, calm down a little bit and tell you guys a little bit of, of the um, the basic information about the movie. And when we do an up close of the, of the packaging, I'm going to go over the special features on that as well. And I hope you have a minute because there's a ton. So this movie is directed by Tony Scott. It was written by Quentin Tarantino and Roger Avari, as I said earlier. It stars Christian Slater, Patricia Arquette, Dennis Hopper, Val Kilmer, Gary Oldman, Brad Pitt, Christopher Walken, Samuel L. Jackson, pre-Pulp Fiction, so he ain't quite blown up yet, but anyway, more about that later. Michael Rappaport, James Gandolfini, the great Mr. Soprano, Christopher Penn, rest in peace, Tom Sizemore, and I'm going to say this wrong, but what the hell, Bronson Pinchot. Let me know if, I say, if I'm close to that. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Everybody knows him as Balky. So the cast is one of the best, which is Quentin Tarantino. All his movies, anything that he's, he has something to do with. And I understand I keep saying Quentin Tarantino. I know this is a Tony Scott film, and I'm a huge Tony Scott fan, Ridley Scott fan as well. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Tony Scott, but to me, this movie has got Quentin Tarantino's signature all over it. But a few other interesting notes about the movie, and I'm not some Columbo here. I got most of this off IMDb. Go out there and read anything I may have left out. This is some of the stuff that really stood out for me. When Avery was asked about Quentin Tarantino, Avery being the un uncredited writer on the film, he, he quoted the following. He said, I love him like a brother, but I can never speak to him again without feeling as though I'll take, that he'll take my intellectual properties. And I'm sure he feels the same way about me. So he has the utmost respect for Quentin Tarantino, but... He, I think he feels, based on the overall feel of this interview that I read online, is I think he feels a little slighted maybe, or uh, that maybe Quentin Tarantino took what he started and just ran with it. You know, take that for what it's worth. Um, the fight scene between Patricia Arquette and James Gandolfini, I'm, anybody that's seen the movie knows what I'm talking about. It's brutal to watch. It took five days to shoot that scene. I thought that was interesting. <clears throat> Tony Scott and Christian Slater had different visions for his character Clarence. Tony Scott gave him a copy of Taxi Driver as homework to get an idea how he wanted him to play the role. I thought that was pretty fascinating. So now, 
when you watch the movie, think Taxi Driver and see how Christian Slater did. Even though the movie was not directed by Tarantino, you can tell it had the, the you can tell it's in his universe. The first clue is Lee Donowitz. Lee Donowitz plays the director in in True Romance. He is the grandson of Donnie Donowitz, which is the bear Jew from Inglorious Bastards. Mr. White mentions in Reservoir Dogs working with a girl named Alabama, which was Patricia Arquette's character in True Romance. And as I said earlier, the sunglasses that Uma Thurman was wearing was Christian Slater's same sunglasses. So it's stuff like that that just kind of makes the Quentin Tarantino universe all kind of come together. And Quentin Tarantino verified all that in an interview after the film was made, that all that was the case. So I thought all that was kind of neat. Um, another cool thing that I found was Michael Rappaport has really bad motion sickness. And if you remember the scene where they were making the drug deal at the amusement park, it shows them riding a roller coaster. Well, the scene of them riding the roller coaster took two days to shoot. Michael, Rapp Michael Rappaport having severe motion sickness, he didn't say anything to anyone on the first day. So the first day, he obviously was doing a lot of freaking out, probably throwing up, et cetera, whatever. Well, on the second day, people on the film gave him some medication for motion sickness. You know, it was kind of the kind of medication to make him not really give a damn. So if you watch the scene, it'll cut from one shot of Michael Rappaport to another shot of Michael Rappaport. In one scene, he's flipping out. The other scene, his don't give a damn is all swollen up. He just don't care. And it's funny to know that now and watch this scene. I think that's interesting. Also, the, the scene, which is one of my favorite, when, um, I'm just going to call him Balky, when he gets pulled over by the cops and him and the girl are in the car and she dumps cocaine all over him, that entire scene from start to finish was all completely done by him. It was, it was, it was totally um, improv. I thought that was kind of neat. Also, when they are, when they are putting on the, the wire on the balky, um, Tom Sizemore and Christopher Penn, the entire interaction of them hiding the wire, everything that is said in that entire scene, uh, Tony Scott just turned on the camera and just let them go. All that was totally them. So that was neat. Also, another great scene. So this movie just had such a stellar cast that it's something you don't see every day, and it's, it's a pretty special film. So if you guys haven't seen this in a while, I would highly recommend trying to pick up this 4K. Uh, and I, this, I, I got a feeling that this is probably going to be my pickup of the year, but um, year's not over yet, so I'm kind of excited to see if something's going to overtake that. But to give you guys an idea of what this thing looks like, we're just going to take this out and look at it. So you got the hard, hard box. You know, Aero, anybody that buys Aero stuff know that's just good quality stuff. And then it comes with this really nice booklet, which I'm going to go, I'm going to go up close, whatever, and give you guys a better view of all this. You got a 60 page book. There's your 4k and inside the 4k, you got some cards in there and we'll look at those closer in just a minute. And one thing I couldn't really show you in the up close, whatever is this poster. You get a really nice two sided poster. I'm going to see if I can get this in the camera. There's the one side of the poster and then you have the reverse cover art, which is the original poster on the other side. So I would recommend this to anybody. So let's go ahead and, and cut to the other camera here and we're gonna get a closer look at everything I just showed you and we'll go over all the special features. Okay, everybody, let's get started on this thing. There's a close up of that cover. I mean, that is, that is just a fantastic work of art. There's the side. There's the back, and I'll go over their special features in just a minute, a little bit, a little bit um, more in depth. Inside, you get the 4K, and inside you have the, you see the disc art there, and what we have here, we have looks like some postcards. I'll see if I can make sure I get these in the frame here. Just the front and back, some images from the movie. The backs are the same on all these, it looks like. Just some classic shots from the movie. Yeah, just, just a nice addition, you know, for collectors. I mean, you know, you, us collectors, we like getting special releases of these movies because, you know, you don't find this kind of stuff in, in a regular run-of-the-mill, you know, big studio release. So, I mean, th this, is, this is good stuff. 
So there's that. You also get a nice 60 page booklet. I believe I read the 60 pages. So you know, you know a, lot of, a lot of good info there, I'm sure. A little bathroom reading for you guys. And there's the poster. It's a double-sided poster. I'm probably not going to be able to take a shot of it here, but I'll, I'll um, get a better shot of it in the other the other camera. Two-sided poster. So just to give you an idea about the special features, let me get all this back, back put away here. Our special features, bear with me, there's a lot. You get a new 4K restoration of both the theatrical cut and the director's cut from the original camera negative by Error Films. Limited edition packaging with a reversible sleeve. Ooh, we'll have to take back out and look at it. Featuring newly commissioned artwork by Sarah Deck. 60 page perfect bound collector's booklet featuring new writings on the film by Kim Morgan and Nicholas Clement. A 2008 Maxim oral history featuring interviews with cast and crew and Edgar Wright's 2012 eulogy for Tony Scott. Double-sided poster featuring original, original and newly commissioned artwork by Sarah Deck. Six double-sided postcards, which we've seen. <clears throat> 4K UHD Blu-ray presentation in Dolby Vision HDR10 of both cuts. Original uncompressed stereo audio and DTS HD 5.1 surround audio. So it looks like it doesn't have an Atmos track. A little, little disappointed about that. Optional English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. Audio commentary by director Tony Scott. Audio commentary by writer Quentin Tarantino. Mm, that's interesting. That's going to be, that's, that's worth price of admission right there. Audio commentary by stars Christian Slater and Patricia Arquette. Audio commentary by critics Tim Lucas. Select scene commentaries by stars Dennis Hopper, Val Kilmer, Brad Pitt, and Michael Rappaport. Man, this thing is absolutely packed with features. Brand new select scene commentaries by co-stars Sal Rubinick, which I believe is um, he plays the director, and Bronson Pinchet. If I'm saying that right, Pinchow, Pinchet. Anyway, new interview with costume designer Susan Becker. New interview with co-editor Michael Tronick. New interview with composers Mark Mancini and John Van Tongren. New interview with Larry Taylor, author of Tony Scott, A Filmmaker on Fire, which I'm assuming that's his autobiography or his biography. New interview with Daniel Storm, co-founder of the annual True, Rom True Romance Fest and owner of the original Cadillac. Wow. Deleted scenes with optional commentary by Tony Scott. Alternate ending with optional commentaries by Tony Scott and Quentin Tarantino. Electronic press kit featurettes, behind the scenes footage and interviews with Tony Scott, Christian Slater, Patricia Arquette, Dennis Hopper, and Gary Oldman. Trailers, TV spots, image galleries, you get the idea. I'm gonna tell you right now, you're never gonna get a better release in 4K of this movie. If you are a fan, I mean, this is pretty much <laughs> A sure thing. Now I'm going to let you know this was not easy to find, so you might want to get online and jump on this thing pretty soon. I actually had to get mine, as I said earlier, from Amazon UK. So let me switch back over to the other camera and we'll continue. So I mentioned earlier about Samuel L. Jackson. As we know, Samuel L. Jackson's breakout role that made him a household name was Pulp Fiction. But I'm on IMDb right now, and if you go back and look at his filmography, I mean, this guy is, is Hollywood gold. He, he is a legend in my book. He's got 195 acting credits. Now, the, his first acting credit goes all the way back to 1972. I was born in 1971. Um, it's called T Together for Days. Never heard of it, don't know nothing about it. You go through, the se go through the 70s, he had a couple more like TV movies and probably just little bit parts. You go through the 80s, and the first thing that I'm looking at here... Um, I remember seeing School Days. Don't remember his role in that. Coming to America, he was the holdup guy. You remember the, the McDowell's? He he broke in and Eddie Murphy and them, you know, took care of him. And then oh, he was in Do the Right Thing. Great movie. Then he was in Sea of Love with Al Pacino. Now, if you guys remember Sea of Love, the opening scene where the cops are all acting like they're the New York Yankees baseball team and everybody got these tickets to come meet the Yankees. 
Well, it was everybody that had arrest warrants. Well, Samuel Jackson came in, stole the scene. Stole the scene from Al Pacino. I mean, Samuel Jackson is, he's just great in everything he's in. And it's just neat to go back and watch these old roles with him because it's almost like nobody knew it yet. But now that, now that we know the Samuel Jackson that we know now, you go back and see these roles, and it's, it's kind of neat to see his progression to where he finally broke out. So that, that's always been kind of neat to me. Just a little bit, just going over this real fast, just going through some of these. I'm probably going to miss some, but Goodfellows. You know, you see him in Goodfellas, you're like, oh, that's Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson's dead. He's in it for maybe, what, 30 seconds, a minute? Um, They just didn't realize what they had, they had to work with at the time, I guess. He was in Juice, which is a great movie. But again, a small scene. It looks like um, he was in Patriot Games. I'd have to go back and check that out. And then Loaded Weapon 1 with Emilio Estevez, the silly comedy, but it was pretty funny. Amos and Andrew with with um, Nicolas Cage. Somewhat forgettable movie, kind of a cult classic now, I guess, maybe. Um, Menace of Society was a solid movie. And then, of course, Hold On To Your Butts, he was in Jurassic Park. And Samuel L. Jackson, who plays Big Don in True, in True Romance. He's not in the movie very long at all, but like he is in most of his other small bit roles and major movies, when he enters a room, enters a scene, you know Samuel L. Jackson's on the screen. He just has the way to deliver a line. He's just he's one of the best at what he does. So, like I said, he's in it for just a moment, but you remember that he's in it. A couple years later, guess what came out? Pulp Fiction. And after Pulp Fiction, Jules Winfield, that was his breakout role, obviously. And then a few years later, he's in Kiss of Death, he's in Die Hard with a Vengeance, and Time to Kill. I mean, the hits just keep on coming after that. And now, of course, with all the Marvel stuff. So it's just I just thought it was something to add into here that, that this was right on the brink of when Samuel L. Jackson was becoming a megastar. So anyway, um, just wanted to throw that in. I hope you guys found that as interesting as I did. Okay, guys, I better wrap this up. I could probably talk about this movie for another hour. This is, it's already went on a little over 20 minutes longer than I had planned. But for the for any of you that have hung out this long, thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, if this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to the channel, like this video, comment below. I would love to interact with you guys a little more. I'm hoping to, once I get over 100 subscribers, I'm going to um, try to do a live stream. If anyone joins, that would be great, but I'll be hanging out for anyone that wants to talk. But um, again, thank you again for checking out the video and I will see you guys next time.